Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be updating my camper shell. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, assemble all the struts that I bought. Um, you can get the size of the strut. Usually it's printed on a sticker or etched into whatever strut assembly you may have on your camper shell. I bought this off Amazon and I think it was 20 bucks. I'll have the link in the description below. So after we have the strut assembled, we'll uh, lift and then we'll start with removal of the old struts. You're going to just use a flathead screwdriver. You kind of pry it right behind the metal little horseshoe shape. Um, once you pry that off, it'll open up the hole and you can just pull the knob out of the strut. Then reinstall your other struts. Make sure you keep the same orientation with the uh, thicker portion of the strut towards the top of the camper shell. Here's a close-up of uh, the spring clip that I was talking about. You just get your flat head and you go right behind it and just kind of pry it up and you'll be able to remove one at a time. Just make sure that the door doesn't land on your head. After that, we're going to just test and make sure that the shocks are working properly and don't pop off. Next, we're going to move to the removal of the third brake light. I'm just going to use a little plastic pry bar. Um, the 3M tape is under and uh, it's really not connected for this old shell. It was pretty easy to remove. It did leave a lot of uh, adhesive and just like dried up tape there. So I used uh, some Goo Gone and a little paint scraper to just get all of the tape residue and pieces off as best I could. After I was done putting some elbow grease into it with the Goo Gone, I switched to rubbing alcohol to just clean up the area and remove it of all dirt and debris and be a promoter for the, the new third brake lights adhesive that I was about to put on. Here's kind of a close up on how clean I got it and what I was working on removing. You can still see a little bit there, but it's pretty smooth to the touch. I was just starting to scrape paint off when I was trying to get really nitpicky with it. Uh, so next we'll go to fitting and reinstallation of the newer brake light that I just bought. So I waterproofed it last night and this is the end state of it. I feel pretty happy with how I did with the waterproofing. I pretty much out waterproofed the entire casing around and where the wires go into the light. And uh, this is pretty much the steps that I did it and from start to finish for the waterproofing. Um, it was pretty consistent on the Amazon reviews that the biggest issue with this third brake light and most brake lights, I couldn't really find one that was like good to go, just quick to buy and I can install it the same thing without doing some sort of prep work. Um, so I knew what I was buying when I bought it and had the silicone ready to go and uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a little bit messy and uh, it is what it is. So here I'm pretty much all done with everything. Uh, I let it sit overnight. So I just kind of cleaned up the area and tried not to get the silicone all over the brake light portion that would be seen from uh, passerbys and things like that. All right, so now we're gonna move into actually installing the third brake light onto the camper shell. 
Um, kind of annoying, I have carpeted headliner and the wires were not pushing, like the headliner was splitting because just the glue's kind of giving out. And uh, it was a little bit more annoying than it had to be. I ended up just sticking a screwdriver through the headliner from the inside and then uh, kind of prying the wire through it. Um, it wasn't too crazy, but like I said, just was not prepared for it not to just feed through. After finally getting it to feed through, I uh, just wanted to put some sealant on the hole that the wires were feeding through. Um, so I'm going to put a little dab of silicone there and then uh, remove the tape from the third brake light. If I could uh, do this over, I would definitely remove the tape first because it was way annoying uh, removing the tape and like trying not to make a mess with the silicone. Um, so. I'll do that in a different order. pretty much getting all the tape off and lining it up and making sure that the silicone was going to be on that wire hole, hole good enough. Uh, just apply some pressure, get it stuck. Next is uh, super annoying to do with one person. Um, having a friend or a spouse that can help you will make your life way less annoying. Um, but basically, I had uh, someone on the Facebook forums post their 2004 double cab Lear shell with factory mounting on it and I used their measurements to kind of create the measurements. Uh, overall people were adjust suggesting and stating that their rails ran roughly like two to three inches from the edge of the camper shell where it began to curve. And then uh, from there, I had 60 inch bars that I bought off Amazon. The link will be in the description below. And I didn't trim to fit the bars. They perfectly kind of fit on the six and a half foot bed shell. And uh, it was just kind of like a, how far, making it even from the front and the back and then trying to abide by the left and right two to three inch gap parameters. Um, and then at the end here, I kind of just go down and make sure that throughout from start to finish, the left side and the right side measurement are really close. I was pretty much within a, an eighth of an inch left to right on both sides by the end of it. And that'll just save you from, uh, if you're um, crooked on one side or the other, and then you go to put your rails on down the road, you're gonna find that like your front rails based off where the anchors and the feet are, are not gonna line up properly with the back rails and you might just deal with annoyingness in that regard. It's not gonna do anything major, it's just not something I wanna deal with. Like if I take both rails off the top of my shell, I wanna just put both rails on each anchor point regardless of front or back. I, I don't really wanna mess with that. So after you get them all measured, um, you just use a Sharpie marker and you'll start on one end and then you'll skip a hole and you'll just put a dot on every other hole. So if you'll know you did it right if you start on the end hole and you end on the end hole. So I'll just go and make sure, double checking, because this is the next step you're gonna go into is uh, drilling a pilot hole to begin 
getting the bolts in. So you'll remove the racks and use the smallest drill bit that came in the dual set to just drill a pilot hole. That's what I'm doing here. Do the same thing to the other side, and then uh, I'm just trying to avoid making a big mess that I have to clean up afterwards. So right after that is done, I'll just vacuum up all the debris real quick, just to not have a crazy mess in my garage and that I'm dealing with at the end of the job. Once you're done with the pilot holes and cleanup, you'll switch from the smallest bit to the next size bit that came with the set, and you'll essentially just expand on that pilot hole um, the purpose of doing the pilot hole, then the larger hole, is just to avoid cracking your fiberglass. If you just do... Next, you'll uh, get all the little O's and remove the sticky from the one side and apply it to every single hole under the track. After that, you will apply silicone to the holes and then put the screws in and start doing it. Recommend doing it with a two-person job. It was kind of a sped up version of a, a step by step. So you would do the stickies on every hole. Then uh, I put the screws and the anchor base on the tracks before putting the ends on. Put silicone in every single hole to waterproof those screws. Then you apply everything in there. After you got it screwed, you just measure and space your bases so again that your bars will be equally spaced or whatever you're carrying is going to depend on how spaced they are. I carry a kayak so I have them generally spaced. I went over the first screw in. So then I adjusted the towers because they were set for my old truck and uh, got it fitted. I hope this helped. Uh, here's a picture of the end product and I... Uh, Thanks for watching and I, please like, comment, and subscribe if you have any questions uh, or if it helped. See ya.